So lately I've been throwing you guys videos left and right and not really keeping you guys up to date what was going on with my personal aquarium life. You've had to notice by now that my channel is focusing on goldfish for the time being because that's what I'm currently working on. I haven't forgot about my 125 gallon or my saltwater tanks or my ponds or anything like that, but Right now, I want to focus on goldfish, and that's what this video is going to be all about today. I'm going to be showing you how the goldfish came to be. Now, originally when I purchased this tank, I had no plans of it being a goldfish tank. Originally, it was going to be a stock tank. I was actually cultivating Lindophila armatica in that tank. I had a change of mind. At the same time, I was raising platys outside in the pond for fun. About two years ago, fall came and I had to move the platys inside. So I did that and I put them in a 75 gallon. Now, this tank had a dirt substrate. There was no sand or gravel. It was just pure dirt at the bottom. Plants would grow like crazy. And at the same time, this environment became a perfect condition to house fish. It wasn't sightly to the eye but it was definitely biologically friendly. <clears throat> I took you guys through the stages of me buying the tank, and after that I went through the stages of showing you guys how to create a DIY background through spray paint. I showed you guys a video once with the platys in the 75 gallon, and you guys never saw it again. And then out of nowhere I had fish in it. And the reason for that is because I started thinking about what I wanted to do with it. I wanted goldfish in a 75 gallon aquarium. I've got a lot of tanks that I'm running and they're all demanding a little bit of my time. I wanted a tank that I could just sit back, not worry about and relax. And I decided goldfish would be the perfect fish to do that with. Yes, I have ponds, but I'm not outside all the time. So back in August, I was going on vacation to California to spend time with my family. And while I was out there, I was looking around and seeing if anything interesting was around dealing with fish. And I came across a place in Chula Vista, California called Coast Gym. And I went to check them out and I fell in love with their stock. And I decided to get some of those fish shipped back to me. So that's where we're at today. Currently, I have one Calico Ryukin, which I believe is a male because I've seen him chasing other fish in the tank. I've got a huge bubble eye moor. That's a calico, but doesn't really show too much blue. It's mostly orange, black, and white. I love that fish. It's my favorite one, and probably my favorite fish right now. Then I've got two red cap arandas, and I've got another calico more in that tank. So without any further ado, let's dive into it. When I was brainstorming concepts for this aquarium, I wanted to accomplish two things, energy efficiency and simplicity. This was gonna be an aquarium that I could sit back and relax. It was gonna be very low tech. I also incorporated an idea that I have on most of my aquariums today, and that's a huge surge protector with 10 outlets. You can find these at Lowe's. What I love about the surge protector is that the outlets are spaced out. I have plenty of room to fit timers, controllers, and I have space in between to label each piece of equipment. Another key feature I need to focus on was having proper aeration. This was achieved by two different means. I had an air stone going 24-7, and the other means is having two Aquion 75 hang on the backs. At this time, I have one going 24-7, and the other is controlled by a timer. Now, actually, they're both on timers. One is just set on outlet mode, and the other is on timer. The one on the left is stationed on the timer mode, while the one on the right runs 24-7. At first, I had them going every six hours. That way, I wouldn't have a dead spot in the aquarium. Then, I decided to try them on both 24-7. And I found that the medium-sized goldfish weren't swimming properly. They were having a hard time keeping up and I felt like they were becoming tired so I decided to put it into that. So I have the one on the right going 24-7 giving me proper surface agitation and every six hours the one on the left will kick on. That way my fish get a break. Originally I had no plans of keeping this as a planet aquarium. I was gonna go for the look of having just a sand substrate. I know that a lot of you are thinking right now, Wayne, if you were going to go sand, since goldfish have such a heavy bio load on the aquarium, why didn't you just go bare bottom making the maintenance easier upon yourself? The answer to that is quite simple. Now, opinions vary, and everyone has their own personal preference, and that's fine. But personally, I don't like the look of a bare bottom aquarium. If you do, that's fine. 
but me I like to create a little bit of an ecosystem. Now in the beginning when I first started adding fish to this newly cycled aquarium there were no plants or rocks in the tank and I became quickly bored with that. I decided that I wanted to spice it up a little bit so I looked in some of my stock tanks and I grabbed a cryptosporalis or two and I threw it in the aquarium and I liked it. I'm receiving one question quite often already and that is the type of sand I'm using in this aquarium. It's a mixture of two different types. I wanted to be economical with this, kind of a DIY approach. At the same time, I have soft water coming out of my tap. My well water fluctuates between 6.3 and 6.5, which is perfect for the Amazon inhabitants I have in my 125 gallon. But at the same time, when my goldfish like a more neutral to a slightly base pH, this is bad for them, so I need to counteract that. I chose to mix pool filter sand with live aragonite saltwater sand. Aragonite will raise the pH of your water. The only problem is, I didn't know how much exactly I needed, so I had to get kind of sensitive with that. What I did was I tested my water a couple of times and took the medium of that to get a positive reading of pH since I'm not using the best pH test kit. And then what I did is I added a little bit of aragonite sand to the aquarium. I let it mix with the water column and I came back and tested. I noticed that it was steadily raising as I was introducing more live sand. And then I came to a pH which I liked. I believe it was around 7.3, 7.4. And I put it into it. I figured that was enough aragonite sand to counteract the well water coming out of my tap. Now there's also a concept of me adding new water is going to buffer the pH and it's going to cause a swing. I've already come up with solutions to address that and you'll be shown in our future video. By this time in the video, you guys are probably wondering where I got my fish from. The fish came from a place in Chula Vista, California called Coast Gym USA. Now I got these fish shipped back to me when I was on vacation. If you guys have been keeping up with my videos, you know that. But if you want to see the video where I do an unboxing of these fish, I'll leave the link in the description below. As far as my stocking plans go, I do want to get a couple more fish. I'm not too sure on the species of what they're going to be, and I'm not in any rush to do that. Black moors are one of my all-time favorite fish. I don't want a common black moor that you can see at any pet store. Those things are such poor quality of a breed that they lose their black color and they become more of a brown fish. I want a either butterfly black moor or I want a truly beautiful long fin black moor and maybe a panda moor. Maybe those two fish will be the last ones I put in here. I also love arandas but I wouldn't mind putting maybe a blonde or a aranda tricolor or an aranda panda in this aquarium and that would be about it. The one good thing though is, is the fact that if I ever do become overstocked, I've got plenty of ponds outside and other tanks at my disposal. Now since I want a lot of fish or a moderate amount of keeping fish in this aquarium, I definitely decided that the plants would play a key role of absorbing the nutrients and waste in the water column. And I wanted to keep the aquascaping as open as possible to leave plenty of swimming room for the fish. I know my fish are very healthy because I've already encountered one or two spawnings. The Ryukin on the right is tried several times mating with the I'm assuming female red calico moor. I'm feeding these fish a mixture of diet. I'm feeding them mostly on micro lift sinking pellet foods. I'm feeding them some fluval sinking foods, new light spectrum, and a little bit of hikari. As this aquarium is stationed in a basement, the water temperature always stays at a stable of 68 degrees Fahrenheit. This tank is also stationed under a window, so it actually gets a little bit of natural light through the early morning hours and the early evening. That's a double-edged sword. I haven't really experienced an algae bloom through the natural sunlight just yet, but it's still early on and this aquarium is young. But the one key feature that I like is the fact that natural light is giving natural vitamins to my fish. A lot of people don't know this and they overlook it, but it's very good for goldfish and koi and carp to get natural sunlight. Apaches can keep their true colors outdoors and the colors can change and become much more rich and vibrant. Overall, the fish is going to get the nutrients it needs from the sun. 
Besides adding new livestock to the aquarium, I do have a few more plans that I'm going to be addressing in the future, and I'll be covering that in future videos. One, I would like to install an 18 watt UV sterilizer on this tank for multiple reasons. One, it's going to help prevent parasites in the water column. A UV sterilizer will not affect anything internal with a fish, but it can definitely rid the water column of certain pests. I have a video on UV sterilizers, once again I'll leave it in the description below. I'm probably going to be adding more plants to this aquarium. Not too many, but just a few. The aquascape in this tank is nowhere near complete. I'm just filling it around right now and for the most part it's going to stay like this for a while, but I'm definitely going to be making slight changes to it. And I might be adding a few more hardscape features like more soft stones. Overall, I'm absolutely falling in love with this aquarium. It's very easy to take care of and it's rewarding. And that's what I intended it to be. Now that you guys know what I've got going on, I'm ready to bring out future videos on how to care guys of goldfish. I've already got one under my belt and I'll put it right there in the video. I hope you guys really like this video and I want you to tell me what you think of it. What can I do to make it better and, and what changes can I make to better off my fish? Also, in our community there are several different ways of doing things, so if I'm doing something that you don't think is right, put it in the comment section below and let's see what you think. Please hit that like button, it'll help me out a lot guys. Hit that subscribe button if you like what you see. I'll be back next week with another video. Until next time, I've been Wayne with Wayne's Fish World. Later.